Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to start lecture 7 on our basic aerodynamics course. So today's lecture I am going to talk about infinite and finite wings. And previously we have discussed infinite wings which are essentially air foil sections. Today we are going to see what happens when you have finite wings which are actually what happens in real life. So whenever you see an aircraft for example, it obviously has a finite wing. Now the airfoil data such as the CLCD CM curves I discussed in the previous lectures are obtained from low speed wind tunnel tests. And in these wind tunnels, the model wing spans the test section from one side wall to the other. So essentially the entire wind tunnel inside is taken up by this model wing. And so what happens is that the flow experiences a wing with no tips or a wing stretching from plus infinity to minus infinity if you want to think mathematically. So the flow around such an infinite wing is called a two-dimensional flow. And so whenever we consider a two-dimensional wing section, we have an airfoil section. So the airfoil section is essentially a two-dimensional wing section and all the data which are obtained for it are corresponding to two-dimensional wings. Now, whenever we have a real wing, we obviously know that real wings of aircraft are finite. So there is a wingspan B and there is an aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is defined as B squared by S, where S is the area of the wing. So essentially what happens is that how important the effect of finite wings is will depend on the aspect ratio. So the flow field of a finite wing is typically three dimensional and so it's going to be different from the 2D flow about a 2D wing because a 2D wing 2D flow is essentially an airfoil section and therefore the lift drag and pitching moment coefficients that is CL, CD and CM are going to be different for a finite wing compared to that of an infinite wing. Now here we are assuming the airfoil shape and the alpha value remain the same and in those situations these coefficients are going to be different. So since we have data from the airfoil sections we need to slightly modify those coefficients to get the data for the finite wing sections. So if we look at a finite wing we can see that there is a high pressure at the lower side and a low pressure at the upper side. Now this you will recall from the pressure distribution on the airfoil sections. So what's going to happen is that now the wing is finite so there is a region here which is open so there is going to be some airflow from this lower side to the higher side or the higher pressure region to the lower pressure region. So that's going to take place on both sides of the wing. So now the effect of this airflow is that a vortex is going to get created and this vortex is going to move somewhat like this. Now if you ever see an aircraft flying sufficiently high, you will see that these kind of vortices are sometime being shed from the wing. And you can see it in many cases if you are an observant person and is looking around the different planes when they are flying. So this vortex is something which is happening because of the presence of the finite wing. So let's summarize some of those things again. We saw that the air flows from the lower surface to the upper surface around the wing tips and from the high pressure to the low pressure region. Now this flow establishes a circulatory motion which trails downstream of the wing. This is something we saw in the previous slide. Now this trailing edge circulation is called a vortex. And one of the things which this vortex is going to do is that downstream of the wing it induces a small downwash component of air velocity and this is called downwash. So 
there is a small downward component which we will see in the next slide and this air velocity component is going to be called the downwash so remember this downwash is called by the tip vortices downstream of the wing so we see that these two wing tip vortices drag the surrounding air down with them leading to a small component in the downward direction called downwash so this downwash is shown here as this w so essentially if we consider the wing section here there is a velocity coming from front that is v infinity corresponding to that there is a lift acting upward that is given by l now there is a downwash present here and because of this presence of downwash the velocity which the airfoil sees is slightly different so it's coming like this and therefore the lift becomes perpendicular to this v which is the velocity which the wing section is seeing in reality so the lift then becomes l dash so let's write some of these things down so the downwash leads to the airfoil seeing a local relative wind which is slanted downward that is this velocity vector v here now the angle at the airfoil section of the wing is effectively reduced so you can clearly see here because now v is the direction of the velocity that angle will get reduced by a small amount and the drag gets increased because there is a component of lift in the direction of drag so for example now l dash acting in this direction there will be a component in this direction which will create a drag and this is known as the induced drag now physically if you want to think about it the induced drag is due to the rotational energy consumed by the wing tip vortices so the net effect of this phenomena is that the local lift coefficient for the finite wing is less than for the infinite wing and the local drag coefficient for the finite wing is more than that for the infinite wing so both these effects are negative or deleterious as far as our aerodynamics is concerned the lift coefficient is coming down the drag coefficient is going up so both these do not appear to be beneficial so now the important thing of course is to calculate the induced drag because that's going to let us get a handle or an equation as far as the complete drag is concerned now remember drag is important because we need to know how much drag is in terms of newton so that we can decide what is the engine or propulsion system we need to put on the aircraft it's going to be something which essentially balances out the drag so that's the force which needs to act in front to balance the drag which is acting backward so now let's look at this diagram which is we're going to be very useful in calculating the induced drag so essentially we have the wing section here we have the cord line we have the relative wind here and so what's going to happen is that alpha is typically the angle between the relative wind and the cord line that is the angle of attack which is seen by the wing now because of the presence of downwash the relative flow direction is now given by this red line here which is the velocity v and therefore what has happened is that the actual alpha is now this alpha effective value so this is between the cord line and the velocity and so we can see that this alpha effective is alpha minus alpha i alpha minus alpha i and alpha i is actually being caused by the downwash so that's something to keep in mind so we can therefore see from this vector here that di is going to be l sin alpha i so this is the lift l and so if we multiply by sin alpha i we get the induced drag in this direction so this is the drag which is being caused by the lift which has now turned slightly backward because of the change in the flow velocity caused by the downwash so that's what is happening so that's something to remember that the induced drag is lift times alpha i and this equation also tells you that the source of induced drag is actually the lift 
and also the presence of downwash because of which this alpha i has been generated. So now the next thing is we need to calculate this alpha i based on downwash along the span of the wing. So fortunately for us, from the elliptical lift distribution which produces uniform downwash, incompressible flow theory can be used to calculate alpha i is Cl by pi a r. So given this value of alpha i, I can then calculate di is L alpha i, and that is going to be Q infinity S Cl square by pi a r. So remember that lift is Q infinity S Cl, and so I'm then multiplying it with this Cl by pi a r to get this particular value. Now, from di, I can extract the induced track coefficient by simply dividing di by q infinity s. And so the induced track coefficient c di is cl square by pi a r. Very important relationship. Essentially, you can clearly see this is dependent directly on cl and the aspect ratio. Remember, if the aspect ratio were to become extremely large, CDI would essentially be driven to zero. So you're getting some design points here. So now we have this equation, but what happens with this equation is that this holds only for wings with elliptical lift distribution, because remember the derivation using incompressible flow theory for this, which we have not of course discussed here, but you can find in many texts is only valid for elliptical lift distribution. However, we can generalize this for any wing by introducing a factor known as the span efficiency factor, which we use the symbol E to denote. And then we can write CDI is CL square by pi E A R. So this is the factor we introduced. And this factor will be used to essentially account for wings which do not have the elliptical lift distribution or which deviate from the elliptical lift distribution. So in this equation now, if we have the elliptical plan form, E will be one, but for all other plan forms, E is less than one. So essentially that is the situation you need to remember. Now, this equation tells us many things. It tells us that induced track varies as the square of the lift which is CL square. And at high values of the lift coefficient, most of the drag is going to be induced. So that's something you can clearly see from this equation here. And also we see that as the aspect ratio increases, that is the denominator term will become larger and larger. The induced drag will decrease. Therefore, you need to have wings which are long and narrow. And that is what you see in many of the aircraft which are designed to have low induced drag is that if they are flying at subsonic regimes, then they have long and narrow wings. And that's one of the design factors which is kept in mind when designing many of the aircraft for cruise type of conditions. So now with all this knowledge under our belt, we can come to one of the very important concepts as far as aerodynamics is concerned. And that is this graph of CD by CL known as the drag polar. So essentially the drag polar is this graph and you can see it looks like this. And this graph is obtained from this plot here. So the total drag coefficient for a finite wing at subsonic speed is C capital D is equal to C small d plus CL square by pi E E R. So you clearly know now this term is the induced drag, the CD term is the profile drag. And the profile drag itself is composed of two parts, the skin friction drag, that is CDF, and the pressure drag due to separation, which is CDP, okay? And this equation is telling you that when CL is zero, this capital CD is equal to small CD. That's this location here. So it's always positive because CD is positive. And then as CL increases, it goes like this. And even in this direction, where there is negative CL, it goes like this because it is CL square. Now, 
this particular graph is very important because in any aircraft you are going to get the drag polar given to you so a lot of time is spent in calculating the drag polar for a finite wing and if you have a drag polar with the help of this you can essentially figure out what is the drag value at a given cl so this is a very important piece of information because like i mentioned before you need to know the drag to figure out what is the engine you are going to use for that aircraft and that's a very important preliminary design decision whenever you are doing an aircraft design you need to essentially figure out for the configuration what's the drag requirement then you have to select the engine for that aircraft so that was the lecture for today so we learned several important concepts today most important being that whenever there is a finite wing there is a downwash which is induced because of the vortexes and because of the downwash there is an effective change in the angle which the wing section sees and because of that there is the creation of induced drag and induced drag is a very important part of the total drag it is a function of lift cl itself and then that led us to the final drag polar which is a very important graph in terms of the aerodynamics and aircraft design so i will end this lecture here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then